Welcome back once again to another episode of Ask the Techies. I'm Dee Lee Beard, and in today's episode, I want to talk to you about these latest fad, these flip cams, these little portable video recorders that are so small, they're about the size of, say, an iPod. So that means they can easily just slip right into your pocket. In fact, it's very lightweight. It's, it's lighter than an iPod. It's about half the weight, I would guess. Um, so make it very comfortable, very portable. And that's what makes these things are really taken off, and that's because you don't want to haul a big camcorder with you all the time. And sometimes even your still camera that can take video is still a bit bulky and heavy because they usually have nicer lenses in them. But this is very small, it's portable, you can take video with it. It does. It's, this particular version is an HD uh, version, um, so you can do high definition video, although it's not truly high def, it's actually 720. Uh, pixels. The video quality is only so-so. It's not as good as a regular camcorder would be. You do tend to get some color uh, balance that's off and some detail is lost a little bit in spite of the fact that it's supposedly 720 pixels. I wonder how they're doing that because the quality, not getting the detail that you do with some other cameras. Um, it has a built-in USB port so you just click on this little switch here on the side and a USB port pops out, and this means you don't have to worry about a cable. Although you might need an extender cable because the way this plugs in, this may not fit very comfortably into your computer uh, USB port, depending on what other devices that you have. So you might want to invest in a little small extender port. This doesn't have any way to output your video to a TV set. And I mean, it has a little port, but technically, this only exports to SD. It's an HD camera, and it doesn't export to high definition. So if it's a big, you know, widescreen TV, you're trying to play the video in a classroom or something, it's not going to be able to do that. So be aware of that. And one of the biggest minus I have with this is the lack of quality audio. The, the microphone is, is right back in here, a little, you know, space behind here. And it does a... Uh, uh, a decent job as long as it's I'm this far away from the camera, just about th you know three feet away. Uh, but if I start going farther away, then it starts becoming a little bit different a situation. Um, <clears throat> in fact, I have some video here I'll play for you in a minute to let you be able to judge for yourself what it's able to do about three feet to ten feet away. And let's see what else do I need to tell you about this. Oh, the controls in the back. While the start button is a very simple you know click, and you can actually feel the click when you actually push down on it. The other buttons, let me turn this on for you, are kind of hidden. They're touch sensitive, so they're kind of like some of those elevator buttons you just touch. There's nothing that actually depresses. And so there you go. Um, you, you touch these things and, and they do things, and it's easy to accidentally hit them. And next thing you know, it's doing something else because you didn't realize when you were holding it. In fact, it's very awkward to hold. It's not a natural place. A regular camcorder does this where you can hold it up to your eye and you can angle in what you're doing. But with this one, you got to hold it this way. And to push, you've got to grab it with your thumb and push on it and then you lose your good grip because you got to somehow squeeze it with your other fingers while you push the thumb in and it makes it <laughs> so it's almost like you really got to hold it with one hand and then uh, push it this way that's what you really need to do oh you can't get anything up close you can only you know be about you have to be at least two feet probably three feet away to get anything so if you want to take you know a little video of bugs crawling around or something like that that's not going to work flowers there is no real good macro uh, version for this, unlike some competitor products. Um, the screen is very small. If you look up here and, and you take a look at that screen, you see it's pretty small. I can easily cover it with my finger. And now you can't see anything. That's way too small. If I am trying to hold it out, I'm at a concert and trying to catch video, I can't tell if I've got the band in the shot or not. Um, because it <laughs> it's just too small to see at arm's length, uh, particularly if you have it angled at all. That can be a bit of a problem as well. Which brings me to another point, it doesn't have any image stabilization. It does have a tripod mount back here on the bottom where you can mount it to a tripod, and I recommend that. There is no image stabilization built in, although with something like iMovie 9, you can probably do a better image stabilization than what you would get built in with one of these. But it, it's very easy to jerk because it is so lightweight, it's not shaped like your hand. If it was shaped more like a, a gun or something, that would be easier to hold, where you would actually start to record this way, you know, like a trigger. That would just be so much easier to be able to do, but the, res the fact that I'm holding it like this, and in order to hit record, I got to take my finger off the camera, it, it, the camera wants to tip forward, so it's difficult to try to do that. There are some zoom features in here, but it's only a digital zoom, so if you try to use those, it's useless. You might as well zoom within your video editing software. Uh, it does come with some software to edit, by the way, but I it's not very advanced. You're probably better off using Windows Movie Maker, or if you use Macs, using iMovie. 
that'd be a far better way for you to be able to go to edit your video. It does have a little software built in to share your video, so it will host your video for you. It's little flash videos that you can send an email address to someone and then they can uh, watch the video. So you can send little things. They have a little you know, greeting card, things like that that might be kind of cute. So that's kind of a, a little bonus that uh, you don't get with some other uh, features, other products. One of the things you'll notice is that this does come with a custom paint job. You can get custom paint jobs for these, which is kind of a neat little thing uh, to be able to give it a shot. Um, so anyway, uh, hopefully that will you know, give you an idea as to whether this is going to be right for you or not. Its best uses are for when you're up close to someone or if you're far away and you don't care about the audio or the audio is going to be really loud so you'll be able to hear it, such as a concert. Um, those are probably the best uses and when you wouldn't otherwise take video because your other devices are too heavy, too bulky. But if you really want to consider something that's portable, a portable camera that has more features such as being able to hook up an external microphone like if you wanted to do an interview with someone or if you want to record a class lecture and have a better quality microphone, you might want to consider a competing product. Uh, one that's coming out this month, September 2009, is the Kodak Z8. Uh, pocket video camera that's coming out. And it does come in three different colors. Uh, you can get it in uh, blue, red, and black. And it's about the same size as the flip cam, only it does true high definition. It does true 1080 uh, pixel resolution. It has image stabilization built into it. It also uh, can record up to 10 hours because it has an SD card instead of built-in memory. So that's a little bit of a plus. Um, it can also take five megapixel uh, still images, which uh, the flip cam doesn't allow you to be able to do. So that might be one to check out. I have not used it yet. Re uh, I read a review on CNET, which was really good. It looked like a really promising product. It's a little bit cheaper than the flip cam. However, when you add the memory, it's usually going to go up. You probably want to spend about 40 bucks on a good, you know, 16 gigabyte SD card so you can get five hours of video. That's probably a good amount to go. It depends on what you're trying to record, though. Now, sometimes on Kodak, you can order directly from them. Um, but uh, they do have some SD cards, but their SD cards are probably a little bit pricier than what you might be able to get somewhere else at some other places that might be cheaper, including Amazon. All right. Well, hopefully that's helped you to figure out whether the flip type of camera is going to be good for you. If you have any questions or comments about your experience with FlipCam, do post your comments. If you go to askthetechies.com, you'll see next to this episode on FlipCam a uh, place to add your comments. Join in the discussion. Share your experiences. Uh, if, if you've liked them, if you haven't liked it, if you have a question, feel free to pose it. Or you can send me a question at askthetechies.com. That is questions at askthetechies.com. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. This is holding the camera out at arm's length. Uh, I can't tell whether I'm in focus, but I'm going to give it a shot and you get an idea for how well the audio sounds. Hi, this is the camera about 10 feet away from me. And uh, I had to record this a second time because the first time that I did it, uh, it didn't actually record. You gotta look for that red light on the front to make sure that it is actually recording because sometimes the buttons, well, anyway, they're a little finicky sometimes.